Hi, this is Ben Baxter with Accent Software. Today we're going to walk through another session on uh, Dynamics NAV for the 2015 client. Uh, this will work for earlier versions and for later versions as they come out. This product is all wrapped around quality control, so testing the incoming raw material for either lot number or serial number specifications, uh, and that could be customer specific specifications as well, depending on whether you're making a finished product or whether you're producing a special service for them that is consuming that material. And it can also be used to test the finished good from a production environment. So if you produce into a, a specific lot number or a serial numbered item, uh, you can test both of those against specific specifications, uh, both for the item and for a customer specification. You could have a menu choice here, just like I have product design, you could have one that says quality control. Uh, and what would be located within that menu uh, are these choices here. And so this is my easy access to everything that I'm going to cover today. We're going to focus on is this quality specification. Again, I said you could have it by item and then by customer and item. Uh, so we can look at those toward the end of this session. We have quick access to both the lot number information and serial number information. And then of course we have the testing itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through a lot number test. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the new button. And when I hit new, this is going to create a new lot test header. And so I'm going to let it auto number. I'm going to pick an item out of my inventory that I know has a quality specification. And then I'm going to say get specification. So this button up here at the top is going to look at that specific item. Now I didn't key in a customer, but if I had, it would pull both the item and the customer specification. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to do it for the item. So I'm going to say get specification it gives me a choice. Do I want to get all? So we have an all-encompassing test or just the mandatory checks that we need to make where some of the additional checks we do are nice to have but they're not always required. So if it's time sensitive then I could do just mandatory but in this case we only have three so we're going to do all of them. And what that does down here in the bottom is that pulls in the measures that I'm going to test. So in this case the height the appearance and the weight of the product. And then I have what method I am going to use to do those tests. So I'm going to measure one, I'm going to do a visual inspection on the other, and I'm going to use a scale to weigh uh, the product itself. Now in order to test this I want to pick the specific lot. Now in this case I only have one lot number for this item. So this is a raw material coming in and I've received it into inventory at a specific lot number. So I'm going to select the lot and then I'm going to select the number that I'm going to test out of that lot. So this is a portion of the overall lot. And you can see down here the quantity at test time is 50. So we're going to do 10% of that. So I'm going to record that I'm testing five units to see what their measures are. So I've filled in enough information at the top. Uh, I can go, so go ahead and uh, fill in that I am Ben and I'm going to be the, performing this test. And then I can start either printing this out and sending it so that I have a worksheet that travels around with me while I go to the different QC areas to test it. Or if I have all the testing equipment in front of me, then I could sit right here at my workstation and record my results. In this case, uh, for the different tests, for height, I have an upper and lower limit and a nominal value. I'm testing in millimeters, so I'm going to measure the height of the product uh, between these measures. So I take my gauge, I do my measurements, and I record my actual. So in this case, we're going to say it was uh, 302. Uh, so that's the result I got from the equipment I used to test with. And then uh, since that didn't turn red or anything, I know that's conforming. I also know that 302 is between my upper and lower limit. So that is a, a conforming result. Now for the second one, it's a visual appearance. There is no upper and lower limit. There's a set of rules or results that we allow for people to select when they make the recordings for this specification. So I'm going to click on this and it's going to pop up my choices for the visual appearance test. So I have perfect, 
slight for slight damage, and unusable. Unusable is the one that is non-conforming. The other two are okay. Now this is all user defined, so I choose what those measures are. In this case, we're going to say it was in perfect condition. Just came in right off the truck and no damage done to it. And then the last one is the weight. So I plop the product down on the scale, I weigh it, and it comes in at 13 pounds. Now 13 is going to be less than my lower limit. As soon as I get off that field, it's going to give me a warning. It says the actual measure of 13 is in non-conformance. Do I wish to continue? So I'm going to say, this is my first indication, maybe I should retest it. Uh, but I'm going to say that's okay and several things happen. You're going to notice that the weight specification has turned red. Further over on the line the actual measure has turned red. And up in the top left corner we have a box that is now saying non-conformance. This test is non-conforming to our specifications. So again, we're trying to make it as visually apparent that there is a problem both with a pop-up box that warns you, uh, red results, and of course the non-conformance. Now maybe I do a retest and the scale was uh, not calibrated properly or something like that and the measure comes in at 14 and a half pounds. Well that is conforming. The number is no longer red. The session goes back to in process, no longer non-conforming. And I don't have any issues left with this uh, test. Those are the only three measures I have for this specification. And so if everything checks out, I can print this off and have the supervisor sign it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move it to certified final so that uh, I've jumped ahead in the certification status for this QC test. There are a lot of statuses that you can pick from. Not everybody will need all of them, but there are a lot to choose from if you need to track it in very fine detail. And then lastly, I'm going to print our certificate of analysis. Now this is just a report so you can control the, the format and how it looks. I'm going to zoom in just so you can see it a little bit better. We're testing the item number, the specific lot, who it was tested by, what status the test is in, how many were tested, and of course the specifications, their limits, and the results of those. And then we have a space for the supervisor to sign off and date, and that certificate of analysis can then travel with that product either to the inventory or out to the customer if this is a finished good that was produced. So again, this test is going to work for both a raw material that comes in through the door or a finished good product going out. If this was left in nonconformance and we rejected it, we do have quick access to the transfer journal so I can move it to a quarantine or return location for raw materials or to a rework place for uh, finished good production items. So uh, I have those options quickly available to me as well. Now just to cover uh, some of the other aspects of this, I did mention specifications by customer. Uh, so if I had multiple lists here of customers, down below would be all of the item specifications that we have specific to that customer. Otherwise I do it just by item, and so here are the specifications by item. Now the reason I don't go to the specifications by item too much is because I can actually see that information through quality specifications but I can also see a tear down step of 80216-T has a customer specific requirement on top of the base requirement. So you have those two capabilities as well. And then other than that, access to the lot and serial number information, some reports that go along with this product but for the most part, that is the quality control test. Again, you can define all of the specifications, all of the requirements that are going to go into this. It's a user-defined list, so you come up with what your quality measures are, you come up with what the method of testing is, what the units of measure are. Once you get this set up, then it's just a matter of flying through those tests and making sure you're getting the results you want so that you can meet your quality control requirements. So other than that, I hope you have a good day. I hope this was uh, useful for you. Please, if you like this video, if you like our channel, subscribe, like it. We love that. Love to see the feedback from our customers. So please subscribe to our channel. Let us know your feedback and have a great day. Thank you.